Marvel's Spider-Man is a fantastic game. It's one that there's fortunately a sequel on its way, but in the meantime, obviously, people like playing and replaying games, but sometimes you fall off, and well, Spider-Man is just a game that has a lot to come back to. Hey folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 overlooked mechanics in Marvel Spider-Man that'll get you playing again. Starting off at number 10, the hilarious wall run glitch. Now, there is no denying the traversal mechanics in Marvel Spider-Man are some of the best around, but if there's one downside, it's that you can't rock it around at mock speeds like in some other open world games. That is, unless you take advantage of this amazing glitch. If you manage to pull it off, it either speeds up Spider-Man's momentum considerably, or it'll just send him rocketing through the air. The biggest issue with this one is that it's pretty inconsistent these days. Sometimes it works perfectly, sometimes just nothing happens, and other times it's just way over the top. Actually pulling it off is pretty simple. You just wall run along the side of a building holding L2 and circle. The L2 part's essential for whatever reason, slowing down time while you're cornering a building makes weird stuff happen in this game. When you're at the apex of the web swing, you turn the corner, release L2 and circle, and if you're lucky enough, it'll just send Spider-Man flying. It takes a bit of practice and it does not always work, particularly because patches to this game have made it harder to pull this trick off, but it's still possible. And it's pretty ridiculous when you manage to shoot yourself off of a building at a ludicrous speed. At number 9, there's plenty of secret air tricks. Like, there's a basic trick system in Spider-Man that lets you strike some poses while swinging through the air. It's not too complicated, kind of just a fun little thing you can do while swinging around. And as a mechanic, most people are probably aware of it by now, but there's one part I had no idea about, the secret air tricks. Now, there's not a lot of them, but there's some tricks that can only be performed while diving. Peter Parker has one, and Miles Morales has a couple more, but they're all kind of tricky to pull off. For Peter, all you have to do is jump off a tall building, wait for him to switch to the dive animation, and hold square, and that'll make Spider-Man do a special spinning dive trick. For whatever reason, it only works when you start diving naturally, so pressing L3 to trigger a dive makes it so the move doesn't work. For Miles, you can actually recreate some of his Into the Spider-Verse moves, like using his phone while falling, but they all have their own requirements. The hardest part is that you have to make it so Miles is facing you while falling, which is most easily done by running off of a ledge holding L3. Then if he's in the correct dive animation, you can hold square and tilt the left stick in different directions and that pulls off some of his secret moves. I did not have any idea about these things and they're very situational, but they're also very satisfying to pull off. At number eight, you can get inside the subway. Like, if you've ever wanted to ride inside the subway train and not just stand on top of it, you can. And even though you're never supposed to get inside a train normally, there are a few ways to squeeze in. Credit to the Reddit user Thwas on this, who posted a video of them pulling off this little trick. How they managed to pull it off was wait for a train car to pass by, swing to the side, and then wall run carefully toward the front of the car. If it's timed right, it's possible to glitch into the train and have a look around. Now, I was not able to replicate that exact method, but I did manage to get into a train. What I did, I waited for a train to stop at a station, then web zipped from a point on the other side of the bridge, which pulls Spider-Man against the train, and when it started moving, it just glitches Spider-Man into it. So there's a few different ways to get inside a train, but the outcome remains the same. You're gonna get kicked out after a few seconds, but still, it's a fun way to mess around and check out parts of the city you probably weren't meant to see. And number seven, electric webs actually short out automatic turrets. A small thing I didn't realize was possible, but was brought to my attention by a Reddit user named Peter Mercado. It's pretty simple actually, but it's something I just didn't have any idea about. One of the most annoying enemies, or uh, obstacles I guess, are the sable turrets. They harass you while you're trying to deal with the mercenaries and can do a ton of damage and are just generally annoying to deal with. But if you don't want to bother with them, you just hit one with your electric webbing and it immediately shuts down. I had no idea this was a thing you could do, and many people posting on this thread felt exactly the same way. I had no idea that certain gadgets could have alternate effects in this game, and it makes me want to experiment with other ones just to see what else you can do. Like I said, it's a small thing, but it's a cool detail that makes sense in the context of the world, but it's never straight up told to the player, and that's kind of something we love seeing in games, especially when they help in such a very obvious way.
At number six, you can mess around with a basketball on some of the basketball courts you may have noticed dotted around New York City in this game. And while you can't actually play basketball there, it almost makes what you can do more interesting. Because while the NPCs actually shooting hoops can't be interacted with at all, the few random balls lying around actually can. And messing around with physics in video games is always at least a little entertaining. And being able to mess around with basketballs in this game leaves players with an obvious goal. Get one in the basket. We have to give credit for this point to Validus, who put together an entire video about their attempts to get a basketball in the hoop. Uh, safe to say, it's not easy, but uh, I mean, he does it. I almost managed to get one in a few times just by shooting a ball with impact webbing while it was jammed against the surface. Like a good shot can really send these balls flying. They're very bouncy. But at the end of the day, it's a really stupid and pointless thing to do. That being said, there's something entertaining about trying to do a thing in the game that can be technically done, but is nearly impossible. At number five, you can actually replay missions. If there's one mechanic in Marvel Spider-Man that's legitimately overlooked, it's probably this one. And I can't blame anyone for overlooking it because it's undocumented and a little unclear, but it is there. In Miles Morales, they have a proper mission select, but in the original Marvel Spider-Man game, there isn't really any way to go back and replay a mission after you've beaten it outside of just starting the game over. At least not any obvious way. But no, you actually can replay missions. It's done by selecting the load game at the title screen. This option isn't available after starting the game. It's only available on the main titles. So when you do, there's actually a long list of backup saves that the game automatically makes at critical points in the story. For most players, if you never really made a manual save, you probably never bothered to look at this menu. And also, maybe you were pretty shocked to find out that you can actually replay missions. The title for each save is the mission you just completed. So if you want to play a certain mission, you'll need to check and see what the actual order of the missions is so you can select the one right before that mission starts. Like I said, not exactly intuitive, but the fact that they made it so you can go back and replay a mission even when they didn't really have a proper re mission replay menu, it's better than nothing. And number four, find the boat people. Every open world game is going to have a few things that the developers don't want you to see up close. One of the more infamous is the so-called boat people. These horrible, incredibly low polygon monstrosities that only appear on boats and can sometimes get a little too close for comfort. The only way to see them is to swim out in the New York Harbor and hope that one of their boats gets close enough to you. Once they're close enough, switch to photo mode and take them in for all their glory. When they ported the game over to the PS5, they even added a new little e Easter egg. Some of them have little post-it notes on them that say, did you miss us? It's fun to see a developer own up to some weird thing they left in the game instead of trying to hide it. And while these boat people aren't something that most people will ever get close enough to see, at least if they're playing the game normally, if you feel like screwing around, they're fun to hunt down and find for yourself. And number three is the vintage outfit and its quip power. This one is just for us, I don't know. But there's something goofy about the vintage Spider-Man outfit that I really enjoy. Probably my favorite part of it is its unique power though, which grants Spider-Man the ability to pull out one of his many, many groan-worthy quips with the press of a button. How come I never fight guys with arachnophobia? These quips are so powerful, they actually create a shockwave, which is somehow actually very funny. Uh, and most of his jokes are actually pretty lame, and that's part of the charm, at least to us. Uh, the little point and pose tie the whole thing together, and it's great for when you want to do a little posing for photo mode. Going around, knocking people over, and tossing debris around while Spider-Man spouts dialogue like a cheesy action figure is just a lot of fun. And one of the few legitimate ways you can really mess with civilians in this game as well. You're a superhero, so you can't really blow anybody up here, but you can annoy them with your supersonic quips. And number two is the lesser known zip points. Swinging around New York City is always entertaining in this game, but one thing a lot of people miss are some of these cool zip points that you can use to get around easier. I'm not talking about the normal ones like the corners of buildings or top of water towers. I mean, stuff like going between air conditioners on rooftops or through the Washington Square Arch. There's even more narrow ones like being able to pull yourself under water towers or through a hanging pipe. Hell, and in the Miles Morales one, you can even web zip through some big wreaths that are sometimes hanging around. I want to credit Reddit user Rascal719 as the inspiration for this one. For all the time I've spent with this game, I didn't know about some of these web zip spots, and it's only made me more appreciative of how good the movement is in these games. And finally, the infinite Venom trick. Let's end on an absolute classic from Miles Morales. The new Venom abilities are a modest addition to Spider-Man's moveset, but under certain conditions, they can totally break the game. 
There's a few missions where this trick is possible. Probably the easiest is the stuck on a skyscraper activity. All you have to do is start the mission, then go and talk to the guy who's stuck. You'll need to beat up some bad guys on the roof, but once that's done, you're good to go. Now you can start venom jumping infinitely, and at this point in the mission, they just give you an endless supply of venom so you can do the thing you're supposed to do, which is venom punch a generator and get the lift working. But if you just ignore that, you can use your almost instantly refilling energy meter to fly up as high as possible into the air, go out of bounds or just do whatever you want. It's almost not even a glitch because it's the game working as intended, you're just doing something the game doesn't expect you to do. It's simple and a lot of fun to just screw around in. Like Marvel Spider-Man is probably one of the best open worlds out there and any excuse to come back to it is worth doing, especially when you're breaking the game wide open. That's all for today though, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is of course a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this one i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter falcon hero we'll see you next time right here on game